everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Terraria Let's Play. So then my friends, there's a few things I want to try out in today's episode and a couple of things I'd like to do, mostly involving the lunatic cultist and trying out some new types of ammunition that was actually added for the 1.4 main update. I am of course talking about the mini nuke rockets which is a type of ammo which you guys let me know about you use these rocket threes and combine them with shroomite bars to become mini nukes and they do more damage and have a higher blast radius and will still not destroy tiles unfortunately for us though my friends what it does mean is headed down on the ground and trying to get us all some more chlorophyte bars because i have in i have absolutely a zero but the good news is there's chlorophyte pretty much all over the place so guys let's just get on with it i'm while we're making our way down though, I do of course want to start off by saying an enormous thank you for all of your lovely support throughout this series and indeed the whole channel lately. It has been really, really appreciated. Of course, if you want to continue supporting the series and you're still excited for it, do be sure of course to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. It would mean the world to me if you did decide to do that. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and if you want to go one further with your support, use code Python when ordering any of my Apex Gaming PCs for 5% off. So yeah, as you can see, plenty of chlorophyte strewn all across the place. We're not going to need a great deal. We only have 240 of the blue mushrooms. We could get ourselves some more since they are nearby. And I would hazard a guess that some of you guys didn't even know that the mini nuke ammo type even existed. I mean, I didn't know. So, yeah. <laughs> But then again, what exactly do I know? I mean, when it comes to the recent updates, there are definitely things that I still have not checked out, even for the first time. So, yeah. That's the beauty of this game, though. You could play this game for years and years and years and years and still not check out certain bits of content. I love that. Something else I want to try out in today's episode is actually trying a different kind of quiver. You guys were saying that the whole enemies are less likely to target you thing. Apparently, that is not a calming potion effect. Apparently, it is something to do with if you're playing on a multiplayer server. If there's a whole bunch of you and your friends playing on a server, then uh, yeah, apparently this will do exactly what it says on the tin. The enemies will have a lower chance of targeting you instead of your friends. So, I don't know, man. Maybe we need to change this out for something different. We've got another magic quiver, and I think you guys know what we're going to be trying to do. So there it is, the molten quiver. That is what I'm looking for. Increases arrow damage by 10% and increases arrow speed 20% chance not to consume arrows and lights wooden arrows ablaze. But then again, when do we actually wind up using the ammo from the endless quiver? I've been using these holy arrows lately and they've been absolutely disgustingly powerful. Like, it's quite hard to switch away from holy arrows back to wooden slash flaming arrows, right? So, I don't know, maybe this molten quiver has limited usage? No. Anyways, my friends, it is time to start making ourselves some mini nukes. We've got 20 chlorophyte bars. Now, I must admit, I don't actually know how many mini nukes we're going to get per time. I guess that's going to be something we find out momentarily here. Because, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We take these out. We make ourselves the shroomite bars. All 20 of them. Oh, and there they are. Mini nukes. The only reason it's got such a crazy amount of damage, of course, is because we're in stealth mode currently. But uh, there we are. 2,000 mini nukes. Even in stealth mode, it has 21 additional damage. When not in stealth mode, this does 101. This does 117. Oh, my goodness. All right. How about a little bit of menacing on this bad boy, eh? There we are. Love to see it. 14% increased arrow damage now. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? You know what? Real quick, just for the sake of experimentation, do we get doubly increased arrow speed if we had both quivers on? If we had both quivers on, that would be a whopping 28% increased arrow damage. Which is incredible. So right now, we are doing 20 in non-stealth mode. With one of the quivers, we now have ourselves 20. Eh? How's that possible? Increases arrow damage by 10%. And it's still 20. Okay, that's not confusing at all. Okay, what about the stalker's quiver? Put that bad boy on. And this still does only 20. Is it the endless quiver it buffs? I don't know. All right, so that does 7. That brings it up to 8. And this brings it back down to seven. But then if I put this on, we're still seven. What the heck? 
These stats make no sense, man. All right, well, let's check out the arrow speed then. I mean, that's relatively slow, isn't it? We put on one of the quivers here. Boom. Okay, that's decently quick. But what if we were to go ahead and put this on? I don't know. I don't believe they stack. Hmm. Okay, interesting to know, I guess. For the sake of variety, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to see if I could buy myself some of these bad boys. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we'll go ahead and buy ourselves uh, a couple thousand right there. Very good. <laughs> We've got an ammo box this guy sells now as well. I don't remember that always being the case. Hmm. Well, nonetheless, we're going to buy one. And uh, yeah, I believe we are ready to give our ranger loadout a bit of a go against something. I'm thinking, of course, the lunatic cultist. <laughs> Whoa! Electrosphere launcher, hello. You just took down a wyvern in a matter of, what, maybe a couple seconds? That's pretty crazy. If you haven't been able to tell already, the Electrosphere Launcher is certainly not a weapon I'm overly familiar with. It's usually something I just sort of pass up. I've never been someone to use sort of explosive ammo guns and weapons. It's just not really been my cup of tea. But maybe we make it our cup of tea. Mmm, cup of teas. Oh, man, I would love a cup of tea right now. <laughs> Look, I'm British, all right. A lot of us like cup of teas. I'm sure a lot of you guys like cup of teas as well. I mean, when the idea of a cup of tea gets into my head, oh man, it is, uh, it's a hard one to escape from. <laughs> Alrighty, my friends, it is time to ruin our world for a bit. <laughs> Can have the celestial dude spawn in. And uh, yeah, should be an interesting time. So ladies and gentlemen, boom, boom, all y'all. Go on, go bye bye. All right, 61,200 health. That's what we've got going on, is it? Let's see what the Electrosphere Launcher is capable of. To be honest, I don't actually know. <laughs> oh, taking a bunch of damage already. That's not very good. You know what? I'm actually kind of not enjoying this at the minute. Uh, maybe we just need to go for the good old-fashioned arrows, eh? I do love me some arrows. Wait, which one's the real one? That guy. Oh, we already got him. Epic! Alright. Oh, my goodness. I mean, why would I ever switch away from the event tide? I mean, I know I'm trying to use maybe some different weapons than what I would normally go for, but uh, the event tide... I think, let's be honest, the event tide has been sort of the MVP of the last few episodes. Bottom right, there you go. Yeah. All right. Absolutely riggedy riggedy wrecking this guy so far. In no way, shape or form has he been a challenge. To be honest, I'm actually kind of insulted. This is supposed to be master bleeding mode. <laughs> well, yeah, this guy is about to go. Oh, hang on. Which one is he? Which one is he? He's the top one. And he's dead. Yep. There we go. He be dead. Oh, good grief. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I don't want to be taking down the nebula pillar first. No, no, no. Hey, check it out. It actually shows you how many enemies there's left. Was that a 1.4.4 change? If so, that's actually pretty epic. Oh, sweet lord above. Uh, right, I don't want to be in here. Oh, there's no part of me that thinks that being in a solar pillar area is in any way acceptable. No way, dude. No way. What I'd like to do is get away from here, ideally. And I'd like to take down the Stardust and Vortex pillars first. Just because I kind of feel like that would be a better idea, considering that we are a ranger, aren't we? Yeah! I mean, I won't lie. This Electrosphere launcher is pretty alright, but in no way is it sort of accurate. I wish there was a way you could switch the mode of this weapon so that it only just sort of shot straight as opposed to towards your cursor. You know what I mean? I feel like that could be a nice little change for this particular weapon. Have like an alternate attack whereby the ammo just keeps on shooting forwards as opposed to towards your cursor. But yeah, I mean, aside from that, this weapon is actually quite nice. You know, I can't really complain about it. I can't dog on this weapon too hard. It's got some beef behind it, you know? One thing I'm kind of unsure about right now is where my jack-o'-lanterns have gone. I bought a couple thousand. I must have accidentally stacked them away somewhere, which is annoying because I'd actually really rather like to get them out just so we can see what the jack-o'-lantern launcher is actually capable of nowadays. Oh, but 
Well, rip, there goes our deathless streak, ladies and gentlemen. We've got about two-thirds of the way through that uh, little area there, though. The Stardust Pillar. Pretty good. Oh, good grief. Uh, oh, I can't find the damn stuff. I don't know where... Oh, no! Oh, oh. That's kind of annoying. I was trying to switch my thing, and I went past the ocean one, which is what I wanted. And now we're going to get spawn killed by Korite. That's just brilliant. Oh, for God's sake. Come on now. Hi, then. Don't lose your steam already. You haven't even taken down one pillar yet. You're not really setting yourself up for a very good run here, are you? I hope this isn't going to be a bad omen as to how the Moon Lord fight is eventually going to go. Oh, no. Why did the solar pillar have to be the one that overtook my base? You absolute butt. Oh, for... Come on now. Come on now. Getting a little bit annoyed now. Come on now. Also, I don't know if you guys have realized or noticed, but um, when I pop over to the ocean, what you are going to realize is the fact that my Stardust Pillar, for some reason unknown to man, it's wound up spawning underneath the ground level here. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> Right, you know what? Sod it. We are going to use our Eventide this time. All right, we're going to see what we can really do against these fellas. Because, yeah, I'm kind of done with dying now. Go on. Oh, my word. I mean, it's just an epic weapon. I've been gushing over the Eventide for a while now, haven't I? For good reason. I mean, for God's sake, it is for good reason, isn't it? <laughs> All righty. Well, there goes the shield. The bad news is we have no direct access... To the pillar. I'm actually going to have to... Somehow, I'm going to have to try and dig down to this. Why did it spawn down here, man? That makes no sense. Come on, i got to be stupidly quick about this. Oh, there's a... Oh, stupid tree! Oh, there's a tree in the way. The tree actually killed me there. The tree got me killed. Imagine getting killed because there was a tree in the way. Oh, my. You know what? This whole taking down the pillars thing is not going in any way, shape, or form as smoothly as I would have liked it to. But uh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, my word. What? what where, what's that? Glommer's flower summons a glommer. What the hell is that, man? I've never heard of that. Interesting. That is pretty interesting, isn't it? Me. I can't just have a second to think, can I? I just can't have a second to think. Come on now. Come on now. Wait, there's ground in the way. No, 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 no. Oh my goodness me. There's 715 million enemies on me. Oh, I'm stupid. Holy crap, this is not going very smoothly. One thing I will say, though, my friends, is these weapons here, the Eventide and the Tsunami, I would very much say that they are both capable of taking down the Moon Lord. The Eventide is what we're going to give the Moon Lord a go with. Uh, but yeah, still, it's just an epic weapon. It really, really is. You guys can't possibly deny that. Whoa, 46 Stardust Fragments. That is amazing, because what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is if and when we are able to go home, uh, what we can do is make ourselves both the Stardust Dragon Staff and the Stardust Cell Staff. Oh, that's going to be cool, isn't it? For goodness sake! Right, I'm not being funny, but have these Storm Divers been buffed or something? I swear they used to be way slower and way less accurate. Hey man, something seems perhaps a little bit sus there. If I could get rid of this stupid chloride. Get rid of the chloride. Holy crap. I hate this pillar. Fuck. Really though? Oh my god. 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 Okay, I've not had this much trouble in an episode, probably since the legendary mode playthrough. At this point, I can't be convinced that the Storm Divers have not been buffed. I genuinely believe they have been, because this used to be one of the easiest pillars to take down, bar none. Like, seriously, it was actually... Look at that. Look at that. They did not have that kind of accuracy before, I swear to God. Dude... Yeah, this is getting old now. This is getting really old now. Oh my god! Why? Right, I'm looking this up on the wiki. Yep, confirmed. My suspicions were correct. 
The Storm Diver has indeed been buffed, and by the looks of it, massively buffed as well. Oh, I'm not happy with that. Those guys are ridiculous now. I would genuinely go as far as to say that those guys are just as annoying as the pesky nebula floaters. The little teleporting nebula dudes. That is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not being funny, but I did not believe they needed changing. I think the vortex pillar was fine. I think the stardust pillar was fine. In fact, the only thing that should have happened is that the enemies from the solar pillar should have been nerfed. Nothing else needed a buff. So yeah, so far it seems that instead of nerfing the enemies from the solo pillar, basically all they've done is they've brought all the other pillars up to the difficulty of the solar pillar, which is not cool. Oh, but then again, it's master mode. Maybe it was too easy before. I don't know. I just don't like the fact that the storm divers are so much more powerful now. They are utterly ridiculous. And now my flight has been interrupted. Why don't you go and scream yourself? As if I get killed when there's only one bloody enemy remaining. All right, finally, that one is down. Interrupted flight again. Hate to see it. Come on now. Come on now. Right, all I want to do now is go get my hard-earned fragments. 53. Wow. So then, time for the fun pillar that is the solar one. Uh, if I could do this, that would be absolutely lovely. We, of course, have to stay relatively close to the floor, of course. That's just how this pillar goes. And it's just how it's always gone, really, isn't it? Uh, so then, let's go ahead and see if we can't get ourselves up to here, perhaps. Get ourselves maybe a couple of little summon dudes for additional damage. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Come on, then. Let's get this thing done. And then what we'll probably wind up doing is we'll probably save the final pillar and the Moon Lord fight for next episode, okay? I'll tell you what, I'm having a way easier time with this solar pillar than I did with the ranger pillar. I would almost go as far as to say that the ranger pillar is actually more difficult now. And I never thought in a million years I would ever say such a thing. Because the solar pillar, I think a lot of you guys know, the solar pillar for many years has been the most difficult pillar to take down for a lot of people. Certainly for me. But yeah, this time, I not even die yet, man. Ow. Okay, well, uh, definitely spoke too soon there. Oh. oh. Well, I've not had to edit in this many death counts. Again, since the legendary mode playthrough, probably. The play three we do not speak of. All right, let's try something else. Let's teleport to the ocean. And then we'll teleport to the snow pylon. Yes, I think that was a pretty smart idea on my part. <laughs> Using teleportation to our advantage. Boom, have some more of these bad boys. And then we can get right back to it, my friends. All right, more than halfway through here, my friends. Let's just keep it going, ideally. Come on now. As if an NPC would decide to spawn in while there is a celestial event going on. Why would you do that? You absolute mad lad. Seriously. I mean, I respect it. That is some serious freaking big ball energy there. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit on the dangerous side. Eh? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. We're so dead. We're so dead. Okay, that one's down. Good oh. Love to see it. Yeah. All right. Not bad. We only died once or twice with that particular pillar. That's not bad, is it? Right, we just need to take down this freaking worm now. All right, there we are. How many did we get from that one? 45. Did they buff the amount of fragments you get per pillar now? Because I definitely feel like we're getting more than usual. Although, then again, this is master mode. Maybe I'm just getting lucky with a high amount of fragments from the master mode pillars. I don't know. What I do know is that now... Temporarily, anyway. Our base is safe again. So where are my jack-o'-lanterns? I definitely bought a couple thousand. Am I blind? So then here we are, my friends. The ancient manipulator. Oh, snappers. We are going to be able to make ourselves a crazy amount of stuff now, my friends. Look at all this stuff. We've got the monoliths. We've got the solar eruption, daybreak, vortex, beta, phantasm. And of course, let's not forget the stardust stuff here. Oh, we're going to be able to have ourselves a fun old time, aren't we, my friends? It is going to be 
an epic first Moon Lord battle to come. We're going to use the Stardust Dragon Staff and probably the Phantasm together. So let's make that bad boy. We shall also make this bad boy. Hell yeah. And the rest of it, we can probably save for another time. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy a few of these, and then we're going to go back to base, and we're going to see where they quick stack. Oh, and here. Furniture? This isn't a furniture. It's an ammo type. What kind of an idiot am I? What the... <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I mean, you've got to laugh, haven't you? As if a piece of ammunition would wind up in a furniture chest. Oh, dear. All right, come on then. Reforge time. Let's do this thing, my friends. We're looking for Unreal on this bad boy. I mean, we might as well just keep going until we get it. Eh, deadly. Do you know what? Deadly is probably the second best ranger prefix you can get. Uh, murderous. I'm thinking we could do better than that. Something with potentially more damage. I'm thinking Ruthless Mystic will do the job as well. I will most certainly take that, and I will not complain about it even one bit. Our epic trio of epic bows. I mean, come on, look at them all. <laughs> so then, ladies and gentlemen, with three pillars taken down, the Lunatic Quarters taken down, and us having a really good stab at using some of these different uh, weapons here, aside from maybe the Jack-O-Lantern launcher, we didn't get a chance to really use that, because I rather foolishly put the ammo in a furniture chest. Uh, yeah, it is time to wrap up today's episode. So, let's do the comment of the day. Well, today, my friends, it comes from Ahmed, who says, Python, I think once you defeat the Quarters, go destroy the Vortex Pillar and... Craft the Vortex Beater and use Chlorophyte Bullets so you won't have to worry about your aim. It's important to craft the other Shroomite Helmet that increases your gun damage. Ah, good idea. I appreciate the uh, heads up on that one for sure. Uh, I mean, we could probably do that at the beginning of next episode, actually. All we need is a little bit more Chlorophyte, a few more Mushrooms, a few more Shroomite Bars, and then we're pretty much in business, aren't we? And then getting Chlorophyte Bullets should be pretty easy as well. We just need to go on a big old Chlorophyte Mining Spree again, don't we? Hmm, maybe the whole Chlorophyte Farm is something we're going to have to try and focus on in the next few episodes, just after episode 50, I think. So, yeah, my friends. For now, though, we're going to wrap up the episode. Thank you very much for watching, of course. If you guys have enjoyed today's action-packed episode, despite all of my shortcomings and my deaths and my inability to sort ammunition into the correct chest... <laughs> Oh, good lord, I'm not going to hear the back of that one, am I? I mean, who puts ammo in a furniture chest? <laughs> Me. The Pythonator does. <laughs> If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, despite that, please do be sure, of course, to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. I'd very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on the next episode where hopefully Moon Lord will be taken out. But yeah, for now, though, my friends, thank you very much for watching. Do have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful support lately. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.